So I've got to write a rational function to represent this graph. Um, so I'm seeing some vertical asymptotes at, at negative 1 and at positive 4. So that means that I know those will have to be in the, denom in the denominator. And I remember I've got to change my sign, so x plus 1 and x minus 4. I'm also seeing a 0 at x equals 0. I'm also seeing a 0 at x equals 2. So those need to be in the denominator. And what I'm hoping you get your at now is that you don't have, you realize you don't have to write x minus 0. That you can just write x. And the other one would be x um, minus 2 to make it plus 2. And then I'm not seeing any other point that I can pick, but I am seeing this horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. And if I were to expand these both out, I would get uh, the biggest exponent, or the degree of the denominator and the numerator and the denominator would both be x squared. So since those powers are going to be the same, I know the horizontal asymptote will just be that stretch factor of that a. So for this problem, I can just write positive 2. And that would be my horizontal last note. And this is an equation that would should represent that graph. I'll go graph it, the one I created, just, just to check. So I went out to desmo.com and graphed the function I came up with. And, and just to check for the comparison, I'm seeing an abs, uh, a, a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. And that's what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. And that's what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing the horizontal asymptote of y equals 2, because that was an issue. I'm also seeing those two zeros. So I th believe I've got an equation that works. Another issue that arises when you're trying to fit rational functions to graphs is what's happening here. Um, it's heading off, the function's heading off in the same direction. It's not acting like the regular old 1 over x, the reciprocal function, which tends to look like this, right? I guess I should make that a little flatter, okay, where they're heading in opposite directions. So we've got to come up with another way of dealing with that. So I'm, I'm seeing for, for, this, for this problem here, I'm seeing that for this vertical asymptote, um, I'm seeing how this is heading off in th something like... Um, 1 over x, it's been reflected around this line here. Typically, 1 over x would look something like this. Uh, for this graph, though, it's ha acting like 1 over x squared. That's been reflected, of course, if you remember those toolkit functions. So we've got to, de got to deal with those, those, uh, those. and the, way, the one way to do that, do that is in your denominator, when you write your, your uh, factors for your, your vertical asymptotes, because that x minus 1 asymptote acts like 1 over x. We won't do anything with that. We'll have to deal with the reflection, but we don't have to do that right now. For this x minus 2 factor, because it's acting like 1 over x squared, we're going to ignore the x minus 1 for a minute and just insert a squared. And that'll help us take care of this part of the this part of the graph. They walk through some examples like that in the book or one example like that in the textbook. So you refer back to this section. But that's that's the thinking behind it. And that's why I need to have that exponent here because of how that's acting. Um, I'm seeing the zero. I mean, just to finish this problem off, um, I'm seeing this zero. And it looks as it doesn't act like a double root. It acts like a triple root the way it flattens out. And I'm looking at this, I see this graph has a horizontal asymptote. So if I were to expand this whole denominator, I'd have an x cubed. And if I treat this as a triple root, I'll also have an x cubed in the numerator. So what that will allow me to do to have the same degree in the numerator and the denominator, which just lets me deal with the, with the horizontal asymptote by just putting a, just by putting a 2 here. And, of course, then there's some, been a reflection going on, so I, I might have to stick a negative in front, but let's go take a look at this graph and see if I have to. 
So it's looking at this graph, by looking at this graph, it looks like I have exactly the same thing. I, I am noticing that I've got this, I did notice it on the book graph, but I'm looking like the y-intercept is, is negative one-half. So one way I could check and make sure that I've got this right is to substitute in, to algebraically substitute in x equals zero. So that would be two times negative one cubed over one times negative two squared. Well, let's see, that'll be negative two over positive four, which is negative one half. So um, that certainly looks like that, that works. I could also go back and look at that original graph, and, and yes, indeed it does. So on that same page in Lippin, I'm seeing this rational function. I thought some of you might want to see this. I'm not seeing a horizontal asymptote. I am seeing something that looks like an oblique asymptote or a slant asymptote. So that tells me that um, it's going to be a top-heavy or the... Or the uh, degree in the numerator to be larger than the degree in the denominator so that's something to keep in mind as we as we start working on this um, so let's see I'm seeing one single vertical asymptote at x equals 1 I'm seeing x equals 2 is 0 I'm seeing x equals negative 3 is another 0 I'm also seeing as a y-intercept of 0, too. So, I've certainly got a top every function. Now I just got to deal with that y-intercept. So, since that's my, my stretch factor, my a, let's, let's substitute in 0 for all my x's and set this function equal to 2. So, a times 3 times negative 2 over negative 1 which makes this, uh, let's see 2 equal to 6a so if I divide by 6 I get a equals 2 6 or 1 third so I could write this function as um, 1 third times that mess or I could just put the 3 in the denominator I could slap parentheses around it, put put the 3 there, and never mind the 1. Okay, and if you kind of look at this graph, uh, we'd have to do a little bit of division here to find it, but you can see that, that would be that would be a, uh, a slant asymptote, but that would be a line, right? So I'm hoping that helps you do these kind of questions too.